tips to get joint ventures, I would say number one, become an expert. That's the biggest. Yeah. If you're an expert in condos in London or whatever, uh, single family in Barrie, Ontario, just be that person and eventually people will like what you're doing and give you money. So the reason why I can't qualify is I have too many properties. And in Canada, it sucks yeah. for, for getting <laughs> financing. It's weird, but it's the way it is. Uh, when you have too many properties, you can't get mortgages anymore for residential mortgages. Hey guys, Matt McKeever here with Matt Pichet again. And so we're going to do another video. Recently, you've been asking me a lot of questions about how can you structure a joint venture deal? And honestly, as I've said a million times before, you can structure it essentially however you want. It really just comes down to finding the win-win or what works well for you. And so I figured, why not bring on Matt Pichet? He's done tons of joint ventures. So right now you're up to- 11 properties now. So 11 properties he's joint ventured. And so you've essentially used the same format or process for each one, yeah. right? Everyone's been simple and the same so far. <laughs> yeah, so walk us through uh, kind of how it works for you. So for my partnerships, I do mainly specialize in single family and Kitchener Waterloo. So they're very straightforward deals. So the way my deals work is that my partners are required to put in all the money. So they have to buy the property, the 20% down, land transfer tax, legal fees, and they also pay for all the renovations. So all the money is involved in buying the property. They have to put all that up and they have to qualify for the mortgage in their name. So the reason why I can't qualify is I have too many properties. And in Canada, it sucks yeah. for, for getting <laughs> financing. It's weird, but it's the way it is. Uh, when you have too many properties, you can't get mortgages anymore for residential mortgages. So they have to qualify in their name. And then my roles is a long list. I did like the top ones, but I basically do everything else. So on closing day, I take over. So I, number one, find the property because I'm a realtor specializing with investors. So I find the property, I manage my crew of, of contractors, the whole renovation, I do all of that. I manage the property managers and the bookkeepers and that alone is a very important job. People think if they just hire a property manager, it's all good. Yeah, There's a yeah. lot of managing the managers that goes on, making sure everything's staying good, tenants are happy, gift cards on Christmas and all that kind of stuff. I gotta take care of all that. I find the tenants, I do a lot of the marketing. I find myself good at marketing, I love marketing. So I find all the tenants, I screen them, everything. Uh, and then also because I'm a realtor in my partnerships, I sell the property for free on my end for the commission. So we only pay the other realtor. So for as long as I'm a realtor, I sell for free. And everything else you can think of that goes on with the property and managing a business, I deal with all of that. On my pro or my partners chill out, uh, kick their feet up, or I'm also the real estate coach, which is how my program works, my real estate investing apprenticeship program. Uh, I'm their coach for the whole time that we're partners on everything real estate related. That's awesome. So essentially you're providing them like a turnkey joint yeah, venture, right? Exactly, would be yeah. fair. And so at what point in time did you start joint venturing? Uh, the yeah. first couple of properties did you do yourself or yeah. what did the kind of the process so look like? So the first two I did on my own and then I started doing YouTube and putting content out and lots of videos. And eventually my idea was to get, just keep marketing until somebody puts their hand up and says, Hey, I like what you're doing. I want to give you my money and let's do something. Basically That's what awesome. I wanted. So I had a big time investor in Kitchener, um, he's also a good friend of mine now. He said, hey, like, I like what you're doing. Uh, what you're saying is cool. I'm gonna give you some money and let's do something together. So we bought one, two, three, I think four properties now. And then I just got up to five, six properties. Now I had the authority and kind of like, yeah. That's, you know, that's an important part so, is that at the, at the very start, it can be really difficult so hard, yeah. to get that first couple of joint yeah. venture partners, right? Yeah. So ideally you would partner with your friends or family for your first one, two, maybe you buy one, two on your own. So now you're up to four or whatever. Now you can start pitching the general public. Well, I had to pitch the general public right away. My yeah. friends and family didn't want to do real estate or didn't have the money to do real estate. So I had to go straight to the public avenue, which was treacherous and hard. Yeah. Uh, but one guy said, let's do this. I bought one, two, three, four with him. And then other people saw that I was doing flip videos and showing the videos and they were like, hey, you're renovating like these properties are amazing. You're getting good tenants. I also want to do that. And then just kept snowballing, snowballing. And now it just gets easier and easier once you get to a certain point, right? So. Yeah, that's awesome. I know a lot of my audience, they're either looking at getting into their first couple of properties or they've got a couple and now they yeah. kind of hit that either financing max or they just don't have the capital themselves to uh, yeah. go out and get uh, more yeah. deals. And it can be really frustrating, right? Because as you get better at it, you get better at finding those deals, yeah. but all of a sudden it gets more restricting from a, a borrowing money capacity or a capital yeah. capacity, right? Exactly. Um, so any tips for anyone that's thinking about starting to do joint ventures? Yeah. What should they, like how do you, how did you figure out how to, that this was the right approach? How did you figure out how to write your contracts? Yeah. How did you figure out all that stuff? So the first joint venture I did, or the 
couple ones in, we, I did. Uh, one of my partners wanted a joint venture contract. The other ones I was on title, and he's, like I said, my main partner is a good friend of mine. So we really have a joint venture agreement. It's, we're, we're both on title, so it's 50-50 that way. But uh, once I started going to the more general public, they wanted a contract. So I think on my sixth or seventh deal, we just had a, a lawyer draft up a joint venture contract, and it's pretty straightforward, it's simple. Um, I think it cost it 1200 bucks. So it wasn't that big of an expense. It no. wasn't that big yeah. of a scary event. And you don't to even have to, to hire a lawyer. Like you can just find one and it just like Matt says, custom. Every deal can be completely different. So as long as you're on a good friend basis, like I like to yeah. be friends with my partners. It's not just business. I like to help them actually give a shit about them, right? So mm -hmm. we're good friends. So I don't expect them to screw me ever. Yeah. But uh, for tips to get joint ventures, I would say number one, become an expert. That's the biggest. Yeah. If you're an expert in condos in London or whatever, uh, single family in Barrie, Ontario, just be that person and eventually people will like what you're doing and give you money. It's essentially yeah. how it works. I, I think that that's an amazing tip. And a lot of it just comes down to doing shit, right? Yeah. You actually have yeah. to go out there and do it. You can only be a keyboard jockey for long, yeah. so long. You can only read about it for so long. Eventually you need to take action because people aren't going to invest in others that aren't taking yeah. action, right? Yeah. Everyone can read about this. It's really coming down and rolling up your sleeves yeah. and doing it. So. I uh, really appreciate you taking the yeah. time, Matt, to fill this out. I think this was really useful. I think you guys are going to get tons of value from it. Also, jump over to Matt's channel. He's been doing YouTube a lot longer than I have. <laughs> You're like four or five years yeah, deep into like that, it yeah. now. And so a huge back catalog and like, again, a lot of your beginning videos are similar to mine where it's like you in the trenches doing yeah. a lot of the work yourself, yeah. you installing floors. Sure, yeah. So it's really cool to be able to follow along with Matt's journey just kind of as he's evolved as a real estate investor. And so definitely go check it out. I'll have a link in the video description down below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more videos like this, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Also subscribe to Matt's channel and we'll see you in the next video. And until next time, remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money out there to make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean like, what's the point? Thanks guys.